<sighs> right, just a just a quick one on on these speakers, and then um, I'm going to have a bit of a grizzle as well at the uh, the end of this video. We love a good rant from time to time, don't we? So um, the normal thing, unfortunately, but we'll get into that in a minute. Um, yeah, so a, a guy sent me um, a pair of DM4s, BMW DM4s, which I think have um, been in storage for a while. And um, when he played them, um, he thought there was no output from the tweeters. So these have the HF1300 made by Celestian, one of my favorite tweeters ever, and um, a Cole Super Tweeter, which are these little uh, jobbies here. 16 ohm Cole Super Tweeter, uh, 16 ohm version of the HF1300 as well. And, um, BMW's own Beckstream 8 inch woofer, which is a good drive unit. Um, so, as always, the first thing I do is um, set them up in front of the microphone and measure them. And one of them had no output whatsoever, the other had intermittent output but really distorted, unbelievable woofer cutting in and out and everything. So first thing I normally check with these is the fuse at the back. So these have a two amp, I think it's a 3 um glass fast blow fuse uh, in the back, two amp. And in the past, I've come across those where the um, fusible wire inside has kind of corroded and become detached from the two bits of metal at the end. Um, so I took both those out and replaced them and lo and behold the one that wasn't working sprang back into life and when I tested it actually the measurements were really good up to the point where we crossed from the HF1300 to the Super Tweeter. Um, and basically there was no output from the Super Tweeter at all. The HF 1300, um, even if you don't roll the top of it off, naturally rolls off at 13 kilohertz anyway. It literally dives off a cliff. There's just no output from it at all. Um, hence why in the Spendor BB, uh, BC1, Rogers, LS36, um, Studio One, Export Monitor, that sort of thing, you will always see this tweeter being used with the Super Tweeter because it doesn't play up uh, beyond 13k. Um, the other speaker, um, once I changed the fuse, it started playing pretty well, but there was some distortion there. And basically the fuse carrier itself was um, all corroded up and that sort of thing, and uh, that's, that's quite common. So yeah, replaced that and again, measured really nicely, almost identical to the other, but no output from the cold super tweeter. So I'm just gonna stick a quick video in now of um, the inside of one of these when I have that part. So a very quick look inside these. Um, there's our crossover there. Um, quite a complex thing, um, but everything on that is really good. All checks out really nicely. Um, I always find that the crossover caps and things on these really hold up well. Um, they're not sort of caps that deteriorate really quickly or, you know, really at all actually. They're always good. Um, unfortunately, lots of push fit connections on, on these speakers. All the drivers have um, push fit crimps on them. And you'll find that these oxidize and they will be loose. And that can introduce quite a bit of distortion. Um, I saw that in the measurements of the other speaker that I've just finished. The other issue with these as well is the um, fuse. They have a little fast blow 2 amp fuse inside a carrier. Um, often the fuse itself will just break down. Um, but these, again, these push fit connections just become really loose. And you can see how oxidized that is. Um, and you'll get no end of distortion because of that. So it's worth taking the drivers out, just nipping these crimps up, giving them a clean up if you can, spraying them with a bit of deoxic, that sort of thing. Um, and then when you push them back on, they'll be a nice snug fit, hopefully. Better still, get rid of them and solder the uh, wires directly to the drivers if you can do that. 
Um, so yeah, it's very small gauge wire as well. Um, one thing BMW did with these is the um, negative for all the drivers is one looped wire as well. Um, you can see there on the on the woofer negative, we've got two blues, um, and they carry on to the HF1300 tweeter and finish up at our super tweeter at the top here. So yeah not ideal but um you know not the end of the world these have a very low power rating i think it's like 30 watts that sort of thing um but yeah a lot of wool inside there's the stuffing i've taken out when you take the woofers out you'll find this um kind of foam mesh as well around the woofer and when you take it out it just turns to dust um it's there around the basket or the chassis of the woofer to stop the wadding um, touching the cone but you know if you just carefully dress it out of the way that won't be an issue anyway um, so yeah there we go a quick look inside um, I've done a, another video on on a pair of these before I've had quite a few of them here um, they follow that BBC design but um, yeah I just thought I'd uh, quickly show you inside yeah, so hopefully from that you can see how the push fit connections uh, with these are often a culprit of distortion um, drivers not working properly that sort of thing especially on the fuse carrier at the back um, <clears throat> so at the moment I've um, been in touch with the the client and told him what's what and at the moment I've replaced the Cole super tweeter with um, a super tweeter I've made a few times using a peerless um, half inch tweeter um, and I've got a couple of the metal surrounds from some older coal super tweeters. So I've fixed the tweeter inside. Um, this is a 16 ohm unit. These are 8 ohm. Um, so I've corrected them with a, a resistor at the back. And now we have um, output all the way up to as high as I measure, 20k. It is slightly down compared to the Cole Super Tweeter, but it's pretty good. And to listen to them, um, yeah, it's, it's pretty good. I mean, my hearing I know rolls off at about 12 and a half, 13 K. Um, but even if that is the case and you can't hear the Super Tweeter working, just the space and air and how it augments the um, lower frequencies, it's, it's still needed. Um, so yeah, they're working pretty well. Um, I will suggest to the client that if he wants, um, you can still buy the Cole Super Tweeter through Falcon Acoustics. I think they're about 70 quid each. Um, but that's 140 quid on a pair of speakers that, on the second hand market, what are these, 250, 300 quid, something like that. Um, and the main body of the speaker is, is working, doing what it should do, so the HF1300 and the woofer. Um, so really we're, we're just filling out that top end, um, which these peerless tweeters uh, do quite well. I've given them a, a good clean, there were a few nicks and scratches on them. Um, I'm not sanding these back unless I get asked to, but I've given them a good clean. They were pretty filthy and just gone over them with some um, oil and uh, yeah, they've, they've come up quite well. A lot of the time, even if there are scratches and things and it's gone through the finish on here, if you oil them, you'll fill that in and um, yeah, it uh, makes quite a bit of difference really. But yeah, otherwise they're, they're pretty good. The covers are a bit, the covers are a bit on the grubby side. I've given them a damn good hoover, which has really helped. Um, got this lovely brown, 70s cloth <laughs> um, whether the guy will want them re-clothing or not I don't know um, but yeah they're not too bad so the DM4 uses a 16 ohm version of the Coles 4001 super tweeter um, there is an 8 ohm version of it as well um, you can buy these new um, from Falcon Acoustics I think they're a later variant, they look a little bit different, but um, yeah, ultimately they're the same thing. But both of these are open circuit, so that's one of them, um, completely open circuit as you can see. And so is the other. 
unfortunately. Um, and that's quite common. Uh, the pair I used to own had the same problem. I've had a couple of other pairs with that problem. Yeah, they're just a very fragile um, super tweeter, but very good when they work. So, uh, yeah, and the DM4, they, they are fairly down in output, I find, um, when you measure them. But, uh, yeah, anyway, these aren't Right, working. so, um, rant time. As I thought, uploading another video on a pair of LS35As, um, you can guarantee you're going to spark some people off who they'll see something in the video that is not quite right, not quite to spec, or there's something missing, and pounce, they will just jump on it. And they did. Over the space of the weekend, um, I'm normally up quite early. Um, you get the notifications on, on your YouTube app saying someone's commented. And I must have removed three or four comments because they were just evil, bitchy and evil. You know, just swiping. Ah, oh, you. this isn't right on those speakers. That isn't right. You need this. <sighs> and... You know, if they'd watched the video to the end, most of their queries were, would be answered. One bloke was kicking off about this piece of plastic not being round the driver. It is round the driver. If you'd paid attention to the end, you would have seen that. I think he was also referring to a previous pair I worked on where this was missing. Um, yeah, it was missing. The driver um, seals nicely against the Baltic birch ply anyway. I think the issue and the reason for this is to kill some form of resonance that may be there um, and to almost isolate this from the front baffle. Yeah, possibly, because there are also fibre washers used on here. I'm not convinced that a hard piece of plastic with some hard fibre washers would isolate that. Um, I'm going to do an experiment when I finish putting these back together um, because they are coming along and do a with and without and see if there's anything in the measurements that show up um, that gasket causing or making a difference is it something that you're going to hear very much doubt it if it is in the measurements it must be very small but we shall see but it's i i love the comments i love the comments on my videos um and no one in this world is an expert on on everything and every part of their their trade and i i'm all up for constructive criticism or people that really do know about these particular speakers that would offer you know or maybe um in they should be like this this is how they were out the factory blah 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 the reason for this that's absolutely fine i love that and i welcome it what i don't welcome is the the degrading manner of the comments um, when you get called like a an amateur dabbling with these things fuck off that is really nasty um, and it's normally the same person or the same few people that crop up on these videos all the time so I mean I just block them and I can say it doesn't bother me, it really and truly it doesn't, to a degree I feel more sorry for the people that do this all the time. Um, I know the type of person they're going to be, and I'm sure their mother in the lounge would be really upset with them with the comments they make, because I'm sure that's the sort of person they are. There's just no need for it. If it's a constructive comment put nicely and politely, I welcome it. Absolutely, um, because you know I haven't worked on every single speaker that's ever made. I don't know the intricate details of every single speaker that's ever been made. It's one of the reasons why I don't like doing videos on speakers like that because they just spark so much. I don't know what you put it. Not anger, but I think people get themselves so twisted up and tied in knots over these little speakers. Anything that someone says that might be wrong, pounce. It's really sad. Get over it. So, um, so yeah, I'll be doing a part two on those soon, and um, we'll see what happens. But, yeah, there you go. So, sorry for a, a bit of a rant. 
it does sort of annoy me a little bit, but um, there you go. You know, I weigh, not waste, I spend a lot of time doing these videos, um, and I'd really be doing myself a favour if I didn't do them, <clears throat> because they chew up so much time. Um, a lot of the time I do them to uh, really show the client what's wrong and what's been done and, and that sort of thing. But it does take time to set up a camera and, you know, record it and talk over it while you're doing the work um, and then to edit that video. But at the same time, whilst it takes up more time, sometimes it's just more work, um, I know it's also helping other people, getting information out on these certain speakers. Perhaps it's a speaker that you've got a problem with um, and I can go over the common issues or what I've found or it's a speaker that you're looking to buy maybe the measurements I've done are helpful you know it's these videos are there for um, the right reasons I think and that's what really annoys me when someone jumps on the comments and it's just horrible there's there's no need for it you know life's crap as it is without dicks like you jumping on the comments and flexing your little pecker it's just not needed so anyway um, yeah I'm pretty sure these are done now um, and yeah I, I like them they follow that BBC design uh, a few manufacturers came up with their own versions of these uh, or the BC one and um, yeah they're good anyway that's a bit of a rant for today I'll catch up with you properly soon